afternoon. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you to yet another edition of BW Dialogue. Uh, today we are discussing a book uh, that's been brought out recently post the COVID uh, scenario. It's called India's Long Walk, uh, Long Walk Home. Uh, it is a collection of essays and poems uh, uh, on what is happening around us and the social milieu the last 10 months have created. Uh, today we have Paranjoy Gua Thakurata, who is a writer, speaker, publisher, author, he is a journalist and he speaks his mind. Uh, Manish Puravit, who is the founder and director of the Authors Institute. Uh, Ishan Chauhan, who is a student of law and who has edited uh, this uh, edition along with Zanayda Kobins. We also have Ms. Brinal Pandey, who is a senior editor, who doesn't really need an introduction. Uh, you know, Padam Shri, she's edited uh, many venerable uh, dailies and weeklies and we all have read her editorial. So I welcome this panel today. First of all, let me talk to you, Paranjoy, and ask you what necessitated this book? My own view is that what we saw after the 24th of March was unprecedented in the history of this country and perhaps the world. I think nowhere in the world have we seen an internal migrant people of so many people, unprecedented. I mean, uh, you go back to the years of the partition, go back to the 40s, go back anywhere in time. And I don't think there is any in instance uh, of so many people, crores and crores of people, who migrated from one part of the country to other in search of their livelihood in such a short period of time. Specifically, from the night of the 24th of March, April, May and June. <laughs> so this was, in my opinion, an unprecedented event. And what was amazing to me was the way the government <laughs> tried to cover up. It didn't provide adequate facilities until it was too late. There wasn't transport. But I was absolutely shocked that the Secretary of Home Affairs, Union Home Secretary, through the Solicitor General of India, Sri Tushar Mehta, would tell the Chief Justice of India that there's not a single person on the highway. There's not a single migrant. To me, this was a shocking thing. So, some months after that, when Ishan Chauhan, a young student of law, he and his teacher of English, Zenaida, asked me whether I'd like to contribute something to it. I said, I'm a professional writer, will you give me something? He said, no, we are working, uh, we, we want to contribute the, uh, the profits of this book for charity. I not only agreed, I agreed to be the publisher. And for me, it's, it's a unique collection, not just of short stories, and works of non-fiction, essays, but also poetry. And I believe it's a, it's a really, uh, uh, a truly amazing collection of writings, which, which work, it's like a mirror to our times. I mean, we have very, very prominent writers like Ruskin Bond and Arundhuti Roy and Ridula Garg. Oh, that was, I was, I was gonna... Okay, they, they agreed to have their works republished. So for me, it was a unique opportunity to work with Ishan, to work with uh, Zenaida, also known as Shanela, and my publishing associate and colleague Manish Purohit of Authors Upfront. And it was also a privilege to have eminent uh, individuals like Rinalji <coughs> who endorsed the book. Okay. That, that's what I want to say. By you know, way. I'll come to the contents of the book and let me start with Mrinalji. Uh, Mrinalji in her endorsement says, in times like these overshadowed by disease, death and poverty, we have all become pilgrims, struggling along different paths to arrive at the same realization that we are not alone, that there may be others less fortunate than us, with whom we can share a lot while there is time. This book is a result of quite nationwide struggle against the gradual evaporation of India's liberal ethos, its cultural multiplicity, and the generosity of soul. So, Brinaldi, uh, that's very strong sentiment expressed there. Uh, give us a sense of why do you believe so? And of course, in the backdrop of the migrant labors, uh, not being looked after and having to walk miles and miles home. See, actually, 
when i was going through the pdf file that ishan very kindly sent to me um what i remembered was suddenly in 1995 when the mandal uh, agitation was at its peak students were burning themselves and there was agitation all over the government was falling i was deeply disturbed so i took time off and i went on uh, uh, i told my daughter who is now a doctor uh, that uh, i wanted to go to kedarnath i said <laughs> like they like the pandavas i want to expire for the sin of being a brahman and for the sin of being a privileged woman with a good job and i just want to go there she said my daughter is a disbeliever she said if you do not ask me to go into a shrine i can sit outside but i want to trek with you so both of us just two of us just hired a taxi and we went and then we trekked from gorikund to kedarnath we trekked with us there was a posse of uh, peasants from andhra pradesh and they were trekking barefoot this was the month of october if i don't uh, uh, forget when it cold. was quite cold and they had thin shorts but you know there was a kind of a bonhomi and a kind of affection which they exuded we didn't know each other's language we came from very different backgrounds they probably but they just asked me ma ye kon i said beti so then they sort of took us in their fold and we trekked together for 14 kilometers on foot from gorikund to kedarnath and then i realized that basically when we begin to see how the sorrows of others are ours then the sin of their uh, put to in human conditions is also upon our souls so i asked one of the women through gesture and thing i said why have you come so they said our village was flooded and we all decided that if the floods recede and none of our cattle or children die we will all make a pilgrimage to kedarnath so they were taking to and kind of thank god and said the floods come because of sinfulness and they receded so we want to thank the lord so it had nothing to do with religion it had to do with deep atavistic human feelings and to my mind this volume does cover that you know when you are pressurized on all sides not just by politics but also by extremes of hunger poverty joblessness and despair there was such despair i remember at that point because we had all been shut up inside our own houses we could not go out in the street we could not talk even to our neighbors uh, we didn't know what was happening all that we had was the television and you know how the channels are so we weren't even sure what we were seeing was the reality or the virtual reality so it was kind of a mix of all that so this image came to my mind that's that's how it happened Pranal ji, uh, for deeply thinking about issues that impact our society. Paranjoy, let me bring in Manish ji and Ishan uh, into the conversation before I bring in uh, Janayda. Um, you know, uh, is there this is a collection of fiction, non-fiction, and poetry? Now, is there a favorite you have, Ishan? Is there a favorite you have, uh, Manish? And is there a favorite uh, you have, Janayda? And if you have, I would like you to read that. If it's a poem or it is a passage from the chapter. Let me start with Manish. Go to Ishan and then go to uh, Zanayat. And if you Manish. can tell us the page that we have the book next to us, we can quickly open it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, uh, I mean uh, for a for a publisher to be uh, saying that uh, you know I prefer one medium over another would would be a little unfair. uh but frankly uh, you know the poetry moved me deeply but apart from that uh, anurag there is much more to this book you know other than just contributions by uh, these eminent writers so in all we have written contributed there are uh, three artists who have presented some very very beautiful imagery inside the book which uh, uh, without actually uh, saying anything says a lot and to me these three art pieces are as equally 
are important as uh, all the other 27 pieces so so to that extent this is a anthology of four forms you know not only uh, fiction non fiction or poetry but also of those beautiful digital expressions that thank you paranjay for showing those to us apart from that the sheer challenge is uh, has been at one level very exciting you know to to coordinate with 30 contributors to coordinate with two editors to get a forward by ashok ji which again is a very very beautiful and moving poem translated uh, from hindi into english uh, and again you know get so many people to deliver it in uh, less than you know 3 to 4 months period has been very exciting and and you know i would really highlight that uh, so every piece has a, a certain unique thought uh, which of course uh, is setting us uh, to think it is encouraging thought which is also encouraging discussion and that's been the intention of it. uh maybe ishna and uh, chanela would have some favorite forms but to me you know to say one thing is better than other is very very tough i think the entire journey has been very very exciting and very very rewarding in terms of the overall experience one has ga gained and uh, um, the sensitivity one has gained towards uh, the final cause of helping people ishan um, what's your uh, take on what you saw as an idea when it started but now it's a finished product hopefully it will bring the consciousness of a lot of people to contribute to this worthy cause so give us a sense of how you feel now that you have the product in your hand uh, i mean it, it's not enough to say that i feel elated uh, you know because when we started we had these very big you know uh, sorry lofty dreams of what we can do what we cannot do uh, but then of course reality hit us that it's not it's not as easy as we made it sound over a whatsapp call uh, but you know numerous emails and calls and requests and denials and when finally uh, i received this in my hand it was just uh, unbelievable uh, to to say the least and as for the favorite uh, part i echo manish's sentiment it's impossible for me because each of these pieces uh, took a lot of effort to uh, you know receive and to first of all make sense even for me and then put it together for people to read and understand uh, the magnitude of what uh, what we've been put through and not only just the migrant crisis but also the uh, you know precarious situation with the environment there are a couple of uh, very lovely pieces here uh one by asim the other one by suprabha and uh, so on where we realize that the situation which we are more often than not ignoring is also an equally uh challenging situation if not a bigger one so i can't point to one single piece but the entire collection is extremely close to my heart because i never thought we could get all these amazing people to join us when we started uh ishan um, let me bring in you know your co conspirator uh, ms zanaida kubins in it zanaida uh, you heard manish you heard ishan you heard mrunali yes. and par paranjoy uh, give us a sense of what you think uh, is the impact this kind of a book uh, will have and the intention you had to create an impact okay uh well i'll start with the intention when we uh you know ishan and i were talking as he said over the whatsapp one day and we decided that this is something we wanted to do uh we were actually expressing to each other venting i should say over the crisis the migrant crisis at the time and the fact that there was no record of the number of people who had died along the way and nobody thought it important enough to treat them as human beings there was no record of how many had died how many had lost their lives and and the misery that these people were going through at that point of time was just foremost in our minds and we would just call each other and discuss and talk and you know vent and then we decided that we wanted to do something that would 
would help even if it was in a small way i mean you know there were people like sonu sood at that time who were coming up and doing wonders and then uh, we said i mean we obviously can't do something of that magnitude but we decided that this is something that we really want to do and then uh, ishan said let's just uh, you know right i said where are we going to get authors from he said just let's just put out a letter to people and see so we got roped in other friends who gave us contacts to people and stuff and uh, that was how the journey began uh, the purpose of this is like i said uh, we wanted to make a difference we wanted to i mean to force people to acknowledge the fact that there is is an entire segment of the population out there that is in dire straits i mean you and i yes people have people from you know the middle class like us we've lost yes a lot of us have lost jobs uh, lost out on income lost out on other things during this covid-19 but none of us has been so badly affected by the grace of god we still have roofs over our heads we have you know a table food to eat and we're comfortable enough we've survived but there are the, there is an entire segment of, of the population that has suffered immensely and to even say that we imagine we can imagine or we can understanding understand the amount that they've suffered is unfair because we really have no clue what we see and what we know is just from the news so this is something that i mean was really close to our heart and we wanted to do this so we did what it, i mean we went through it all um wrote to people got rejections there were many uh, renowned authors that we approached who said replied to us and said we're so sorry we've got other writing commitments and though it was difficult to accept all of that we we just had had to so then like um you said there are 30 of us in in like manish said there are 30 of us involved in the making of this book and to me that's like really special because we've come from all parts of the country uh, all walks of life we've got lawyers we've got people from the railway we've got educators we've got students and i'm happy to announce that two of my students who've just graduated and gone to college to university are published in this book they are both girls with no former um exposure to uh, being published anywhere this was the first time for them and as a teacher i feel that you know i I've, i've done what i what my what i've set out to do which is to encourage them and to push them forward and give them the exposure that they need also the painting that you see in the first page is also done by a student of mine and uh, this girl is an extremely talented artist that i wanted to feature and when i told her about it she said ma'am i want to contribute i'm not a writer i'm not a poet but can i contribute art i said go ahead and at that point of time i had no clue where this was going to fit in we neither isha nor i had a clue whether we were going to include art whether we were going to have a poetry section or not but we just said okay contribute contribute whoever agreed to contribute we just said let's let's take it and let's see where we can go from here and well this is what it turned out to be and like ishan said i mean there's no favorite section uh, the entire project is very dear to my heart and uh, you know without paranjoy and manish i don't think we would have gotten there really i mean they've been <laughs> instrumental and they've been they they've just been super in helping us achieve this thank you so much mrinal ji i want to bring you in before i bring paranjoy again mrinal ji uh, what you wrote in your note and your appreciation also talks about prevailing time it was a larger commentary on what's happening around us give us a sense of uh, what do you think can be salvaged and what do you think can cannot be salvaged uh, i think what we are seeing is an age of migrations um it's a very strange period in human history where very large swaths of people not just in india think of the migrants flocking from africa and from the uh, central asian countries 
to trying to get into europe latin americans trying to get into america and the countries pushing back pushing back uh you know some somehow the other the there's an acute sense of homelessness and a desperation to create a home which is a basic human instinct to create a nest जैसे हिंदी में कहते हैं ना तिनका तिनका जोड़ के घोसला बनाए और सडनली एवरी थिंग इज गॉन आई रिमेम्बर वेन वी वर चिल्ड्रन दे वॉज दिस फैमिली नेक्स्ट टू अस टू टू आवर हाउस दे हैड मूव ड्यूरिंग द पार्टीशन एंड देर वर टू डॉटर्स इन लॉ इन द फैमिली दे हैड बोथ गॉन मैड दे वर नॉट थ्रेटनिंग और एनी थिंग बट दे हैड जस्ट लॉस्ट देर माइंड because it had impacted them so greatly so i thought of them a lot during the covid period because uh, <laughs> they used to frequently drop by because my mother was a writer and she was a very good listener so they would come and exchange and we were children so we would crowd around and hear them talk so it was disjointed talk but the thing that haunted them all the time was ki hi hamara koi ghar nahi reh gaya hi hamara i remember we had a cage my father had said lose the parrot he considered it you know, cruel to the parrots so they saw the cage they said bhai sahab ye humko de dijiye hamare paas ghar nahi hai hum partition ke baad aaye hain humko pinjra de dijiye you know so it is that kind of a period in human history not just in india but all over you know there's a very touching piece in this by ruth vanita where is home she lives in montana she also lives partly in india apparently she commutes and you know your language changes your background changes your neighbors change your you leave your assets behind you have to start from scratch so many things and the whole process impacts you very very deeply not just physically but also emotionally and spiritually we have no data about how many might it we have no data about what mental tortures we have some visual data or some visual evidence of the physical tortures they underwent but how do we measure the immeasurable intellectual human emotional and mental tortures that they underwent and how it impacted them for all we know millions of our fellow indians may never regain a mental stability of the kind that they had before this whole thing happened so times like this make you think in terms of basic human instincts for survival you want to survive but you do not want to survive by yourself you have to survive with your children with your loved ones even at the cost of your own life or if you are living alone as a migrant in a city your first instinct is to go to home even if it means walking thousands of miles the instinct is so strong to be with your own people at a time of pressure so this is something that you know comes out again and again in this uh, you know krishna the late krishna sokti was another of those uh, writers who had in the teens been forced to migrate from pakistan to india and her writing is full of this kind of you know despair and this kind of puzzlement what is happening to us you know reshma the famous singer i remember she used to sing a song sada chidiya da chambave so you feel rootless all of a sudden you feel rootless you feel that you own nothing that nothing that you know you were promised belongs to you anymore so this is a very scary thing out of this can come of course great proliferation and a new civilization but this can also create war like situations where man kills man to save his or her own family so i you know lie awake thinking of these things which is a favorite first time for feeding people but uh, they do want thank you so much mrinath ji paranjoy uh, you know uh, i take a question right away i uh, ask you a question uh, right away and uh, you know this question is from shrijita biswas with the influx of uh, uh, misinformation that is coming from all sources how do you think this book would help in bringing truth uh, out uh, in terms of being a mainstream source for that and how do you think it can contribute in uplifting the marginalized okay 
let me first reply to that question. We are living in a post-truth era. Misinformation is rampant on the social media. These are there are works of fiction, but the works that are non-fiction, the essays, are based on hard, solid, factual evidence. So, in a sense, we're trying to uh, tell people the reality, the harshness of the reality, the harshness of, of, of the inequalities in our country. And I want to add a few points to what uh, Minalji said, what uh, Zenaida said. It's unfortunate that there's no record. How many people migrated? Where did they go? What, what, how many people died? How many people didn't forget the mental ailments that people suffered? It's, it's, I think, terrible that the government of India claims they have no record worth talking about. <laughs> now, I want to also make a few other points. And this is a little about the book and another point that Vinalji touched on. You know, what is unique about the book that it combines first-timers, people who are writing for the first time, young students, with reputed authors like Ruskin Bond, Arundhuti Roy, Mridula Gar, Alok Rai, Nandita Haksar, many other people. But what I found uh, very, very relevant, and, and this is what I want to add to what Minalji said, it was as if I was going back 80 years in time. It's, it's as if our society had regressed. My, my, both my parents had uh, moved from what is today Bangladesh, what was then East Bengal. I heard from them stories about the Great Bengal Famine of 1943. That was the peak of the Second World War. The World War ended in 45, but before that and after that, the partition had been had, had was happening. The subcontinent was being partitioned. In more ways than one, I think we as a society we moved back in time. The the the, the regression in the form of uh, Islamophobia, uh, the complete neglect of the underprivileged, the inequalities. I think, unfortunately, we have returned there. But I just want to add a few few more points. One is that you know this book is not just about despair. It is also about hope. It is again, it's about hope against unsurmountable odds by people who are so 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 underprivileged. And I must tell you something, I was very skeptical how a, a volume of short stories, some of which were republished, essays, serious academics, scholars, economists, sociologists, writing and poetry, how they would combine. But I must say, when I read some of those articles, it brought tears to my eyes. And, and I, I don't think I'm saying this because I'm a publisher, I really had tears in my eyes. And, and though uh, Manish and, and Ishan and Zonaida have refused to read out any one section, may I read out just the foreword written by Ashok Vajpayee, who's a well-known writer, and he's translated his own poem. <laughs> It'll just take me a minute or two to read it out. It's called, No, We Won't Be Able to Write Our Time. This still and deserted time where even birds and beasts are silent, where the daily noises have been replaced by mere echoes, where prayers, calls and cries have alike dissolved in silence, where friendships lie unexpressed, where silence is spread over everything like time. How do we write such time? Don't know whether this is our time or whether we have been forced to enter another time. This time is so eve that on it we see no wrinkles, folds or holes. And we hardly find a passage to flee. No, we won't be able to write our time. This time is moving slow, so slow that all clocks seem determined to go slow. The wind is cold before its season. The spring has come and flowers blossom. As if to laugh at our evil times and squirrels raise irritatingly fast and climb trees or pillars. Pigeons have suddenly grown less in number, as if they too have set their sad trips back to their village homes like migrant workers. Even being in our homes seem a solace. We are at least in our homes, if not in our times. Hope is lying in some corner pressed down, like a piece come off some waste that is sure to be swept off and thrown away tomorrow, if not today. No we won't be able to write our time. This is what Ashok Vajpayee wrote by way of a preface to the book. 
थैंक यू परन जॉय एंड कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन टू यू मनीष ईशान मृणाल जी एंड एंड ऑफ कोर्स प्रोफेसर क्यूबिंस फॉर ब्रिंगिंग दिस आउट आई होप दिस एक्ट इज मैसेज ऑफ होप एंड क्लियरियन कॉल फॉर डू टू डू समथिंग फॉर दीज मार्जिनाइज सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसाइटी वी विश यू लक एंड वी विश टू बुक more leadership more impact uh, and i'm sure it will get that so congratulations thank you to all of you and a happy 2020 thank you, thank you. god bless <laughs> thank Good you afternoon. so much thanks guys i was so long thinking it might be a little longer and all of you would get another opportunity but well uh, that that's what i would also thought uh, but i guess not so all right hopefully there will be more such uh, couple of more such things but yeah let's let's uh, see we'll try we'll all try you also do your bit and and uh, we we also have to make an effort all together we're still live yes we are <laughs> oh uh, the gentleman is left but we are still here okay yes, we're all live <laughs> okay you want to ask and i think uh, the on, only thing i would add is that you know this when i initially thought of this book Or, or this collection, or doing something. I don't even because this was not what we had originally envisioned. But the, uh, but the thing was that when I look back at my own family, Menachi uh, uh, will remember this. Uh, my great grandmother Sudha Kumari Chauhan uh, of the Kubladi Mardani, who was a Jhansi wali rani. Thi. You know, everybody knows that line. Sab ne school me padhi hai. and when i think of that and i think of the thing uh, the stories and everything else that she wrote and I, and now i see that well where india is today i see what what must they be thinking what uh, what are they afflicted by sorrow they are certainly afflicted by sorrow because this is not the india that they envisioned they they wanted a country where everybody could uh, you know live with their heads held high and this is why they suffered uh, numerous bouts of jail time and leaving their children alone at home and so many other things and when i see that and then i look at look at the other side premchand ji again uh, related to me is a great grandfather so then then i see ke amrezo ke kaam nahi karna hai to choti si bimari se upar chal gaye you know that's because of that conviction that i don't want to go for the british there were people like those at one point and now they are they don't care about our own people the migrants that move from one place to the other they are slum people and we don't seem to care about and i and when i think of that it's greatly saddening because this is not what they gave up their entire lives for this is certainly not what they thought when they thought ki hum bharat banayenge ya hum hindustan banayenge bharat to kuch alag hi ho chuka hai hindustan wo banane ki soch gaye the पर ये वो हिंदुस्तान नहीं है जो वो बनाना चाहते थे सो आई फील एक्सट्रीमली सैड एंड वेन आई सी दिस एंड एंड आई होप दैट दिस सम ऑफ द थिंग्स हियर कैन सॉर्ट ऑफ शेक दैट मेमोरी फॉर दोज हु हैव दैट मेमोरी एंड दोज हु डोंट पॉसिबली अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दे मस्ट हैव इनविजन एन इंक्लूसिव सोसाइटी समवेयर समवेयर वी वी कम टूगेदर एंड मेक अ बेटर लाइफ नॉट ओनली फॉर अस बट फॉर एवरी so yeah that 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 was my main thought and you know uh, i i hope that it's a small measure of something it's not obviously not as good as it could have been or uh, or as you know as big as they were i can never be as big as they were or shivani ji she mentioned uh, minal ji's mother um, and and so many other people you know but uh, hopefully it is something not now not not 20 years later but maybe 30 years later when people look back at this they, this will be a reflection of what had happened in our time because we won't be able to write our time so this is something it definitely is a record i mean i was looking i was looking at uh, you know public in fact it, it, it's on the news uh, yesterday it popped up with my when i was reading the news a uh, publishers expect 2021 to be another year of publishing you know they they expecting um, sort of a boom in publishing because uh, covid 19 uh, 
during last year a lot of people wrote books about covid-19 and published their books and i was looking at some of the titles and the contents and you know a brief about the books uh some are basically about guide books on how to stay safe some are stories of what people went through uh some are uh you know covid-19 illustrated books for children and some are what people uh think is happening in the world um but there is nothing like like this one this is unique in the fact that like money said it brings four forms together all in one so we do have the facts and we do have the stories that appeal to people i hopefully will appeal to people i'm sure they will uh and yes they're very very touching like parant i said i had uh tears in my eyes when i was editing you know and putting the whole thing together um so yes i hope this will make a difference to people and i hope this book will be around for a long time and people will remember it uh and the fact that the three of us worked hard to get this out to to you all is i think something and it is just to say that i'm just going to add because i'm sure minal ji and parand and manish everybody has other things to do <laughs> so we'll we'll come to an end with this but the only thing i would add is that since it was a book about india and not about any one person it was unfair for us to uh you know sort of pocket the profits if there were any uh, although pocket the profits is not a very appropriate term it sounds a bit off but and uh, that's why the thing was that we needed to send this to an organization that will make make good use of it and sort of make a difference to to what end we wanted to achieve and for that i'm always grateful to paranjo and manish because in in this crazy time doing a a volume which is not economically feasible to be very blunt you know it is uh, is difficult you know ishan if i can just briefly comment we are hopeful we are hopeful that we will this book will be read this book will be bought we are hopeful uh it's just come out so it's early days yeah absolutely i do not perhaps share sunaida's optimism about the future of publishing in 2021 i am a far more circumspect and pessimistic about it because the traditional model of publishing is completely broken it's completely broken now mm. i mean whether it's newspapers or magazines or weeklies or dailies or even books uh piracy which used to be also existing earlier it's become a cottage industry it's rampant now yeah yeah uh, manisha how optimistic are you about the future of publishing i was just wondering maybe you can add a few points yeah you know um so let me start with uh sharing chenela's optimism that i'm optimistic uh, about the simple fact that there has been boom in writing so i'm sure something good will come of it you know so that's on like a very positive note uh the challenges of business don't really uh, present a interesting dynamic to it so while there is hope there is optimism the reality of uh, day to day running of a publishing operation which is uh, you know distribution the biggest one has taken a big hit and that could probably bring down this optimism to a more realistic level uh, the other aspect is that while you know many people at least in the english language space do buy from amazon that's not true of regional languages that's not true of smaller cities that's also not true of the fact that you went to a bookstore and you didn't want to buy something but you found something and you bought something that never happens online um, the reality also is that less people are going into bookstores and that's that's again a big worry so while many bookstores are open they are struggling uh with you know less people coming in because of various fears that they may have there because of the fact that disposable money to them has also reduced in some sense so that's that that's a challenge but in the end uh you know despite the structural challenges or changes that would happen to the publishing industry i am on a longer term not about 2021 alone but i am on a longer term very hopeful because a lot has been written and that's really the big hope 
and maybe people are reading more too yes they are they are ji aap kuch kehne chahenge hum abhi abhi hum log to hamare jo publishing ka bhavishyat aap kaise dekh rahe hain bhavishya kaise dekh rahe hain mujhse puch rahe hain ji ha ji ha aap se main puch raha hu ye main ye sab baat sun rahi thi to mujhe yaad aaya ki kabir जो थे वो भी इसी तरह के समय से गुजरे थे जो उनका समय था वो भी इसी तरह से इट वाज अ टाइम ऑफ कल्चरल क्लैशेस ग्रेट फिजिकल वॉर्स एंड ग्रेट डायस्पोरा इधर से उधर लोग जान बचाने को भाग रहे थे इधर से उधर जा रहे थे उन्होंने तीन मूल मंत्र दिए थे सबद साखी रमैनी सबद मीन्स द वर्ड साखी इज टू बी विटनेस टू योर टाइम्स Hmm. A witness become a participant, and Ramani is constant mobility. So for him, mobility wasn't essentially a bad thing because it brought you closer to humanity. Through that, you created with the medium of words, and with that, you became a witness, become participant and code creator of a particular portion in life. so one of his most touching couplets goes it's addressed to his wife loi who was also an orphan like him he says kahat kabir suno bhai loi hum tum binasi rahe ho soi he tells his wife you and i will die out but the words will live on so there is hope yet manish ji sorry if it may not cover your profits but somebody will fatten off this particular bit of uh witness become words well uh, if there is nothing anybody else would like to say maybe we can just thank the thank organizers you. yes thank you uh, purvi ratnesh deepak i see the three of you still on the show uh, on 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 the on the on the live broadcast and uh, do keep us informed as and when you put this on youtube or it's available uh for public viewing and i just want to uh, anurag is not with us but thank you all for uh, putting this together that that's all i can say and uh, if anybody wants to thank say anything you. else thanks to everybody no, no, thank, thank you so much uh, thank you very much and thank, thank you minal ji for much. taking thank the time you. to come yeah. thank you minal ji thank, thank you thank you thank you chanela thank you everybody thank you everyone thank you manish thank you ranjoy minal ji for being here and for getting this book done Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.